If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. Welcome everybody to the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, August 27th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. If you watched the 14th edition of the NBC show, The Biggest Loser last spring, you saw Danny Allen walk away with a lot of money and a lot less weight, losing 121 pounds over a 12 week period. Allen is back in the spotlight now as one of the faces of USA Water Polo's campaign called I Am Water Polo featuring celebrities in various fields embracing their past as water polo players. And joining us now from her home in Chicago is the biggest loser, Danny Allen. Danny, it's great to see you. How are you today? I'm great. It's great to see you guys too. I'm, I'm doing really well. Well, it looks like, you, uh, looks like you just got back for some exercise. I did. I wish I was a little more put together, but I did my first practice try for a triathlon I have coming up this weekend. Oh my goodness, a triathlon. Well, I don't know what, what could be harder, standing in front of a, a stage of thousands of people in the finale of The Biggest Loser or having to do a, do a triathlon. I think it's probably equal. It, it, yeah, although I'm a little more nervous about the try, just because I'm afraid of falling off a bike. <laughs> yeah, that could be hard. And, and um, But I guess, you know, you, had a, you have a, a pass as a water polo player, and you, and you also played soccer, so you know how to swim and you know how to run. I can understand the, the fear of the bike. It's, it's natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know the finale of The Biggest Loser aired back in March, but I would imagine it's still just a thrill to know that you, you won through, after all that competition. It's been the most amazing ride that I've had. I just, if you would have told me a year ago that this is where I'd be sitting, I wouldn't have believed it. And the sky's the limit right now. And I'm telling you, the opportunity that I got with USA Water Polo and being able to swim with the team is, I've told everyone, has been the best experience of my life so far. You got to, when you say swim with the team, you mean the water polo team? Yeah, I got to swim with the women's USA Water Polo team. It was the coolest thing ever. Oh my goodness, that must have. That must have been probably a, a really big rush for you to be able to, you know, go against people who are now in their primes. I mean, what was that like? Oh, and I loved it. And they didn't care. They kicked my butt. They were, <laughs> they were amazing. I mean, they're coming up and, you know, Cammie's introducing herself to me. I'm like, I know who you are. This is crazy. This is awesome. So you're a water polo geek. You follow all the water polo players all the time? Oh, totally. I got in trouble so much at work last year when they were playing because I had it up on the upper screen in the corner while I was doing my work. Oh, it couldn't have been, um, it could not have been an easy day for you at work when they won the gold medal. Oh, no, I was trying so hard to keep it quiet and it just, it didn't work. <laughs> I got everyone joining in though. It was a fun day. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, so before we go on, I want to, I want to show viewers a, a brief clip of the finale of The Biggest Loser just in case they missed it. Okay. When you started this competition, you weighed 258 pounds. In order to win The Biggest Loser, in order to win a quarter of a million dollars, you need to have lost more than 120 pounds. So you told me about some of the opportunities that you've had since then, playing with the water polo, USA water polo team and everything. What have you done with the uh, $250,000 that you won? You know, honestly, it's still sitting in a bank account. I'm so not a spender. I, I'm a saver and I like to, I kind of like just seeing it sit there for a little bit, but um, I did buy my very first my first purchases and then I did promise one of the finalists Jeff Nichols that we would go on vacation we kind of made a little side bet regardless of who won we take the other on vacation so that's coming up in January as well cool where do you think you're gonna go I think we're headed to Cancun that uh, that's so nice. far one of the number one places so far we just want somewhere we can just get away and not worry about anything and then Jillian Michaels can't find us <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can eat all the fattening foods you want not have to worry about her looking over your shoulder <laughs> exactly <laughs> well um, Let's still talk a little bit more about your water polo background. Uh, from what I understand, you were a walk-on goalie at Clemson 
and you were actually recruited there to play soccer. Is that right? Yeah, originally I had intentions of playing soccer at Clemson. Um, you know, I played soccer my entire life, and I played water polo in the off time because it was just a really good way to cross train. Um, but, you know, I, did, I ended up being, like, uh, just kind of tired of soccer. I was doing the same thing over and over again. I needed a break. And, you know, the, the team asked me out at Clemson to play water polo, and I was like, I'll give this a shot. And they kicked my butt, but it was an awesome ride. <laughs> yeah, and the two sports aren't that different. I mean, one's on land and one's on water. They're both the goal is to get a ball into a net. Right. And going from honestly, as a goalkeeper in soccer, I was handling the ball with my hands. So that was the one little plus side that I could I could launch the ball all the way down. So what's what's more intimidating, uh, tending goal in soccer or goal, being a goalie in water polo? Um, I would say goalie in water polo because I couldn't do it. I played wing. Um, in water polo, the wa I think that ball goes so much faster, and it's in the water, and if it catches on a corner and smacks you in the face, I mean, I would actually have to say being a water polo goalie is a lot more difficult than being a soccer goalie. So in your time at, at Clemson playing water polo, uh, what, what kind of things did you learn about yourself and, and I guess the sport as well? You know, I learned so much about the sport because it's it's a very physical sport. It's really tough. It's you need a lot of endurance and a lot of strength. But there's also a grace that comes with water polo. There's a finesse that you need that not a lot of people have, and I don't think they realize with water polo, it is an all-encompassing sport of grace, finesse, strength, and and you know just regular cardio. So I learned a lot about water polo and myself just in the fact that. You know, you can't just jump in a pool and go. It's it's definitely a trained sport, and you can really admire the players that continue to play. Uh, this may be a question a lot of viewers are asking. Uh, you were a collegiate athlete, and you played soccer and water polo for many years. What brought on the extreme weight gain that had you, um, you know, fighting to lose it at the beginning of The Biggest Loser? You know, honestly, there was no weight gain for me. I had always been overweight. I was um, a heavy kid. I was heavy in high school. I was, I have, I still have my learner's permit that says 205 pounds, and I was only 15 years old. Um, in college, I was upper 230s. I got away with it being a water polo player because a lot of times the girls can be girthier, um, but it wasn't healthy. Um, the biggest thing for me was the nutrition. I knew how to work out. I knew, you know, with soccer and water polo and being an active person, the fitness wasn't the hard part. It was learning what to eat, how to eat, and how much to eat, in all honesty. And I think for many people, portion control is a huge issue. So for you, going on The Biggest Loser, it wasn't getting all the, the grueling exercise and everything. It was just learning to be a little bit more, um, I guess, rigorous about what goes into your body. Exactly. It's being more conscious, conscious and knowing exactly what you're putting into your body and using food for fuel. Not comfort, not emotion. Um, that was a lot of struggle that I had. Um, but don't get me wrong, the physical part was hard. I, I would like to throw Jillian Michaels at anybody and see how well they take her on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine that there were a lot of tears at the end of some of those training sessions. Oh, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so is that is that something you still struggle with in terms of, of, of nutrition, in terms of, of how you see food these days? Oh, without a doubt. And honestly, what I had come to realize is I was actually a food addict. I don't think it's, you know, it's something you can necessarily go to a clinic for like alcohol addiction or drug addiction, but it is an addiction and it's a problem. Um, I think a lot of people have it. So I still have that, that addictive personality. I just want to binge and fill my stomach. And I've just had to give myself some tools to be aware of it and know what I have to do so I don't binge on the wrong foods. If I'm going to binge, you know, unfortunately right now I binge on Brussels sprouts when I need that, you know, that full feeling. I found ways to kind of subside that, that, that curb because you know what an alcoholic can stop drinking alcohol and a drug addict can stop drugs but you can't stop eating right. you know so it's it's a way of life and it's been a learning curve for sure and each day gets a little bit better and then you know sometimes a little worse but it's just being aware and it's it's opened my eyes up so much and obviously this is an issue that a lot of uh, swimmers a lot of athletes face especially in their teenage years when they're when they're struggling with their weight, they may already be overweight and they continue to, you know, binge eat, or they may be underweight and they binge eat. Um, obviously, as you said, this is something that that you know can be done. You know, is mostly just a, it's a mental thing. But if you you know you have a teenager come up to you and say, I, I had this issue, what would you tell them to be would be the biggest thing that they can do to fix it? You know what? I would first find someone that they can talk to about it, and usually 
not a family member. I know a lot of times I had struggles and I wanted to talk to someone about it. Um, and it coming from my mom or my dad was just a little rough, you know, because you just want to be perfect for your parents. So I would say, one, find someone to talk to. And then, two, give yourself tools to keep yourself busy. I know a lot of times my food came from when I had downtime and I would just binge and go out of crazy. So I'd keep myself busy. I put, you know, I made my apartment a safe zone. There's nothing in here that I really can't go too crazy on if I have one of those problems you know there's no chips there's no ice cream there's none of those those bad food choices in my apartment because it's a safe zone if I have a craving for something I'll actually have to physically go out and get it and then I'll kind of rework myself is it really worth it do I need it um, so giving yourself the safe zone and someone else to talk to about it whether it's a friend or a therapist someone just to kind of give you an outside perspective and make you feel not alone in the in the situation that you're in well, I think that's a great perspective and it's probably one of the greatest um, rewards for you of being on the biggest loser not just losing the weight and winning the money but being able to have a different perspective on on food now Oh, without a doubt, and it's it's incredible, and I think the best part I have right now is I have the ability um, to pay it forward. I've been given so many opportunities that I, I talk to so many people, and I can see how much of a struggle it is, whether it's food or this or that. Someone is struggling out there with something, regardless if it's their weight or financial or it's their kids. Something's going on, and just to be an advocate where I just feel so open and free to talk, and I think if other people can feel that too, to and kind of just get beyond what's going on in their head. That's where I was grateful to have Jillian. She really made me mentally tough. Well, you also probably you had to be mentally tough to be a water polo player too and a soccer player. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of water polo, do you still play it often? I know you said you got to play with the water polo team, but do you, you, you know, get in the water, play some polo on a regular basis? I wish I did. I haven't had an opportunity too much, but I did like with um, some of my training for the triathlon, get in the pool and bring the ball in and just kind of have some fun with it some fr with some friends. No official play, but it's just, you know, throw the ball around. It's not, you know, it's just all about fun sometimes. So I've done that a couple of times. Yeah, I mean, you, you play a game of pickup basketball. If you got a pool, play a game of pickup water ball. Exactly. Well, Danny, I, thank you so much for talking about your experience with The Biggest Loser and, and water polo. We appreciate your your thoughts on, on uh, staying healthy, and I'm sure a lot of people who are watching the show today will, will take that to heart, and I think that means a lot to them. And I hope so, and I'm, you know, I'm out there on social media, and I respond to everyone that I can, so I hope if anyone needs anything, they can always reach out. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, and good luck with the triathlon. Thank you so much. All right, so you can see water, USA Water Polo's full slate of celebrities in the I Am Water Polo campaign by going to their website, IamWaterPolo.org. And that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.